guys and welcome to another car review here on the channel and this one is very different <laughs> to the last one that we did which was of course for another German car but that's about all they have in common the BMW i8 this one though the Volkswagen Touareg V10 totally different machine but I would argue that the single most important difference between this one and that BMW has nothing to do with the performance nothing to do with the practicality and even nothing to do with the price I would argue the most important thing when it comes to a review that differentiates the two cars is that that BMW was brand new and this is used because that makes a massive difference to what makes a good car and what defines what will make it good or bad in a review. So why do we say that? Well, the reasons are fairly obvious, but for those who maybe aren't thinking of them, there are huge advantages of a used car, especially a used luxury car or a used performance car. And the biggest advantages are you can get a massive amount of spec and usually a great level of power and performance for a significantly lower price than if you buy a brand new car. The disadvantages are, of course, that you get very little, if any, after-sales support, unless the particular dealership or garage that you buy it from offers that and also the car has whatever level of wear is associated with its age. So in the case of this Touareg for instance it's a 2006 model it's one of the very last first generation V10s before they facelifted it in 2007 and it's done 100,000 miles and unlike the BMW that we reviewed last time the crucial difference with this one as well is that this is my car whereas of course I didn't own that Beamer before so for those who are new to the channel this is my first vehicle so it puts me in more of a unique position of actually living with the car on a daily basis rather than a long-term test drive for instance to get used to a newer vehicle so what has been my experience what would I say the good points about it are for a potential owner and what are the things that you should be aware of and maybe cautious of well first of all to get to the good stuff of course the highlight of the car is the engine you could buy any Touareg if the engine does not matter, and for that matter, you could get any SUV. You can find cheaper ones, you can find more expensive ones, newer, older, whatever the case may be. So if you are looking at a Touareg V10, chances are it's because of that engine. The five liter, technically a 4.9, twin turbo diesel V10. Puts out just under 310 horsepower, just over 550 pound feet of torque, which is very impressive. The engine redlines at like four and a half thousand RPM, so it's a pure workhorse, very lazy power and torque, which I personally love. And one of the most impressive things about this car's performance is that it actually feels a lot quicker than it technically is. 0 to 60 is like seven and a half seconds, a little bit quicker as you get the newer model, but that doesn't sound that great anymore. Even for an SUV, you're talking three or four seconds quicker than that in some cases by today's standards with something like a, a big twin turbo hyper performance top of the range model which of course this was at the time around sixty thousand pounds back when it was new i purchased mine for five so of course you get a massive amount of spec for the money aircon air suspension automatic gearbox you know all the kind of stuff that you would want a car like this to have as well as that centerpiece of the engine of course the engine is what it's all about now, as far as what that engine offers from a practicality point of view, not just performance, you can get reportedly about 35 miles per gallon from the engine. I personally don't think I have run that. It's more like 30, realistically, and of course it's less in city traffic. But combined with the fact that it has a 22-gallon tank, which is 100 litres, you are looking in excess of about 600 miles, if not more, to a tank of fuel. But of course, that tank of fuel will cost you over £100 to fill here in the UK, so you do have to bear that in mind. It has good fuel range, but not necessarily good fuel prices, and there is a big difference. So it's a great long-distance car, and that is definitely compounded by the fact that you've got this relatively quiet, really talky, ultra-low revving, really lazy engine that gives you all the power and torque that you want at literally just the tap of your foot. You don't even need to floor it most of the time. But at the same time, you've got all the kind of luxury accoutrement that you'd want from a car like this. The electric windows, the cruise control, the air suspension, all that kind of stuff that wouldn't necessarily need to be associated with a performance car, just a luxury car in general. Especially one from 2006, because that's 13 years ago by this point. So of course there are some ways in which the car would show its age, and other ways in which I would say it holds up very, very well, as I mentioned in my announcement video when I bought the car. Well, the car definitely has them. 
And that's coming from somebody who loves the Tuareg V10. I really do. It's actually one of my favorite SUVs. I love the fact that the engine is so unique. There is, as far as I'm aware, nothing else on the market like these Volkswagen V10s. And as far as memory serves, I believe only the Tuareg and the Phaeton use this engine anyway. It's not the most powerful thing around anymore, but it's still a very cool engine. And the nearest thing would probably be the Audi Q7 V12 TDI. And of course, for that car, well, current market prices are around at least four times more expensive for that than it is for this. You can buy one of these for five grand or less comfortably. A Q7 V12, on the other hand, you're looking more like 25 grand at least, and that's for one which isn't necessarily in stellar condition. Now, speaking of that condition, that is the thing you need to worry about, because I would say, and this may seem like a strange comparison, that the Touareg V10, especially from its original inception in around 2004 and including the facelift in 2007, until that car's end of run basically, is very similar to another car which you probably wouldn't usually associate it with on the market. And that is, I would say, the Mazda RX-8. Now, why would you ever compare an SUV like this with a big twin-turbo diesel engine to a 2 plus 2 sports car with a rotary engine? A petrol one, no less. Well, the reason why is this. Both of them have very unique approaches to performance. One is this crazy big twin-turbo diesel performance engine, and one is, of course, a rotary performance engine. They're both unique, and that comes with a lot of downsides. The primary one, of course, being fixing it if something goes wrong. And just like the Mazda RX-8, it has a lot to offer. The RX-8 looks good, sounds good, has great performance, and is surprisingly practical for a sports coupe. Likewise, the Touareg is fast, good-looking, powerful, and offers all the kind of practicality that you would want from a large luxury family car. However, just like the RX-8, there's a reason why they're cheaper, and that reason is a calculated risk. If you choose to buy a Touareg V10, you need to know if something goes wrong, and chances are it will, especially the older you go and the higher the mileage, it will be very expensive to repair, because regardless of how much you pay for the car, it's still a £60,000 car to begin with. So of course it's not going to be cheap to maintain and cheap to fix when the vast majority of the issues are going to be electrical. And for full exposure, the first day of driving this car, I had two major faults. Pretty much as soon as I'd finished making my announcement video about buying the car, later on that day I drove it some more, so I did about 35 or so miles in it after buying it. And in those 35 miles I had two major faults. The handbrake had a fault, where the car thought that the handbrake was still on, or the parking brake when it wasn't still on. And the second, much more major issue is one which, at least at the time of releasing this video, I'm still waiting to get fixed. Thankfully, I'm not the one paying for it, the guy who sold me the car is, but that is that the air suspension broke. It decided to just dump all of its air, and the car is now riding as low as a Golf. So, that is kind of disappointing. <laughs> and that is a major understatement, considering that it was my first car, I had so much love for it, and I won't lie, it has definitely tainted the experience for me. Because when you've done 30 miles and already had two major faults, and considering that mine had 100,000 miles, which is fairly low actually for a Touareg, most are at least 140,000, it's bad, let's be honest. That's why I say it's like the RX-8. When you buy a Mazda RX-8, it's cheap for a reason. Generally, it needs to have the engine serviced, maybe new rotor tips put in, and it's a regular thing. The maintenance is expensive, but for those who choose to go for a car like that, it's because it's your passion. And even with all of those downsides, it's still a practical, fast, good-looking, affordable car. You just have to know that calculated risk. So for me, for instance, I don't even know if I'm going to keep the Touareg ultimately, because as far as I'm concerned, it's currently on strike two, and that's within one day of driving the thing. So if it has a third strike, I'm just going to move on, which, again, I said I would do in that first video if anything did go wrong with it. Anything major, that is. Because at the end of the day, buying a really cool car for a low price is great, but when it comes to repairing the car, if the repairs cost almost as much as you paid for the vehicle in the first place, well then you have to decide if that's worth it to you. For some people it might be. I know some people like to buy two Touaregs and use one for parts. It's not a bad idea if you can afford it because in its own way, it is a great car. 
It's just the reliability of a car of its age and complexity is the, I would say, only issue that it has. But it's a pretty big issue. So ultimately, if you do want a Touareg V10, I can certify from personal experience, it's a fantastic car when it's working properly. It looks fantastic, sounds great, goes like hell, and is very, very practical. However, when it breaks, you will hate it. <laughs> so make that calculated risk decision and just decide if it's worth it to you. But that's it for my verdict on the Touareg V10. Of course, I'll see you guys next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.